to a special rate to do with this Nevaton because that's the first full high day rate we actually did in this sacred space after we built it many years ago. So <laughs> I'm always delighted to do this right. So fall equinox, uh, lots of things going on in this right, but we're going to focus on the Hellenic hearth culture, the Greek hearth culture. And in this season for the equinox, we particular put an emphasis on the story of Persephone. Now, uh, it's mostly part of the Homeric hymn to Demeter, which I believe is the third one, is where we get this story. And the story goes, Persephone is a happy maiden going about her life and she gets kidnapped by Hades to, um, to be his wife. Hades has done this with Zeus's approval, with her father's approval, Zeus, and she disappears into the underworld. And she accepts the hospitality of the underworld and is part of, and, and is intended to be the queen of the underworld. However, her mom gets all upset about this. Her mother Demeter gets all upset about this and cries and bawls and is very unhappy. And because Demeter is in charge of all the agriculture, the fields go barren. The land is cold and won't, will not yield any crops. So approximately half the year goes by until Hecate finds out what's happened to Persephone, tells Demeter. Demeter goes to Zeus and says, hey, give me my daughter back. And there's lots of negotiation. And eventually they work out an agreement where Persephone will spend half of her time on Earth as Kore, in our world as Kore, and half of her time in the underworld as Persephone, queen of the underworld. And these equinoxes then mark that transition. In the spring, our grove invited Persephone Kore to join us and to bless our seeds and to make our gardens fruitful. In this season, we're inviting her again and we'll actually accompany her on her path to, be, to once again be queen of the underworld. So for those who've uh, done other kinds of paganism before, this is going to have some of that underworld, that, that land of the dead energy that you might associate with Samhain. There's some of that going on here. She's, so that's really our focus of this rite. We will also be honoring Dionysus. Dionysus, in this context, especially to the Orphics of the ancient Greek world, was a dying and reborn god. He would die and then be reborn every year. And we also invited him into our space in the spring at that time, it, we were more focused on his, his honoring of theater and also, of course, the wine. But in this time, now towards the end, we're thinking again more of the dying and rebirth energy of him. So that's where a lot of this complex comes from. And you can also look in ancient Greek times to the Eleusinian mysteries. These are secret things. They are so secret that Thousands of years later, we still don't know what they were. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had to do we've had to do some piecing together. Uh, now, in some of you who've been here in years past, we've done sort of an initiation into my efforts to try and recover some of the ideas of that mystery. This year, we won't be doing that because we can't really do that over Zoom broadcast to the internet and keep anything a secret. That's not how the internet works. <laughs> but instead, uh, this year, we do have, Persephone does have some teachings for us. And so we'll be experiencing a guided meditation where she will have some advice for us, some ways of thinking about how the world works and, uh, and her role in that. So that's the main focus of the rite. Now, since there are people who have not done our style of ritual, 
ever before. We'll just give you a brief primer. There are three major symbols of Druidry in this Nevaton, many of them directly behind me. We will have a fire. We will have a well, which is represented by a cauldron of water way back in the corner. And we will have the sacred center of all the worlds represented by this stone, the Omphalo stone, originally found as it is the belly button of the world. And there was originally one in front of the great temple at Delphi, at the or front of the oracle at Delphi, but in many other places. So the first part of our rite is about establishing this area as a sacred space. And that includes, if you're watching this remotely, whatever space you are in and making into your sacred space, this is that part is for you too. In fact, I encourage you to, if you can, as much as you can, sort of follow along with us as far as some of the ritual actions that are going on to make your space where you're watching this your own sacred center. The way our, the way our thinking goes is all sacred centers are the same sacred center. So if you're establishing one in your space right now, while we're doing this here, it's the same space as far as spiritually speaking. You will be seeing us give a lot of physical gifts. We're physical beings. And so we can give physical gifts very easily. Spiritual beings, they can't affect the physical so much. So we figure that's a nice gift for them. It's a, it's a nice way of we're going to give some stuff to them as a way of inviting them into our home. It's sort of like how when you invite your friend to show up for dinner, right? You want to make sure that you serve them good food and drink. That's what we're doing when we give a lot of physical gifts. You will hear, so we will create a sacred center. We will be honoring Mother Earth, Gaia, to start things off. Actually, not quite. We'll be honoring Hestia, the goddess of all the hearths of the world, and then Gaia, the goddess of the Earth. And then we'll be calling for inspiration. Inspiration in the ancient Greek world is from the, is the muses. You might have heard of the muses. You'll hear, um, most uh, sacred poems, you'll hear, oh, sing to me, oh, muses of this, that, or the other. That's why. So we'll be invoking the muses for inspiration. We will be working with Hermes today as our gatekeeper. Hermes is a god who can travel anywhere, connect to everything. He, has, he is the god of crossroads and also acts as a guide to the dead and making sure they get to where they're supposed to be going. So he'll be involved in this rite. We will then get to kindred invocations. Kindred invocations are our, kin are our invocations to general categories of spirits. And this is your chance to welcome particular beings into this space. The first group of people we'll be honoring are the, our beloved dead. People who've lived, who've died, who've been our friends, our family or our heroes, people who we care about, who've lived and died. So your friends, your relatives, good time to remember them. Our second group of beings we'll be honoring are the nature spirits, the pneumatoi. These are the spirits of all the beings around us, the trees, the animals, grasses, the fungi, lakes, rivers. All these beings we see as having a spiritual dimension as well as a physical one. And so this is your chance again to invite your favorite spirits of, of those beings, those kinds of beings into this space. You'll hear us talk about nymphs and satyrs and potomoi, which are the river spirits. Third group we honor are the deities, all of them, the teoi. These are, of course, the big names that you hear about in mythology. And, you know, this being a Hellenic rite, of course, you can pay a special attention to Zeus and Hera and Apollo and Artemis. Those are great names to invite in, but they can also be beings that aren't from the Hellenic culture. These are the beings you work with, the ones you, you find important to you personally. You can just quietly invite them in. Then we get to the main focuses of our rite. We'll be invoking Dionysus. We'll be invoking Persephone. 
you will see a purification step going on when we invoke Persephone. We want to make sure that when we're dealing with her, one of one of her epithets, one of her names, which we in fact use in this ritual, is Despoinia. This is despair, difficulty. And she can be that. She can also be very compassionate and fair, in my experience anyway. But we do want to be especially nice to her, given given that that side of her personality. So we will be giving a bunch of gifts. We have an opportunity for people to give their own personal gifts that they may have brought with them or performances they want to give. We have a big basket that I don't know if it's on camera, but it's way back in the corner for people who have brought produce that they want to give back to the gods and goddesses and other spirits. Because this is our harvest season. This is when we've started to collect our fruits, our vegetables, everything we need to sustain ourselves. So we want to give back some of that to thank them for all their hard work over the course of the growing season. After we've done that, we've given a whole bunch of stuff out. Now we're going to start doing some divination work to make sure that and to get an idea of what kind of blessing, what kinds of energies they're giving back to us in exchange for all the gifts we've given them. And assuming everything works out well with that, <laughs> and, and they're reasonably happy with us, we will uh, bless some drinks, pass them around to, to share blessings personally. And if you have a drink at home that you, or if you're watching this remotely and you have a cup of drink with you, that's fine. We'll bless that alongside the pictures that are here. Then we have our guided meditation to travel with Persephone to her role as queen of the underworld. And that's where we will learn some teachings from her. But don't worry, Hermes is gonna guide us back. We'll come on back here. And then most of the closing of the ritual is about thanking the beings that have helped us out in this rite. Oh, one other thing I forgot earlier, from earlier. There is a period during this rite when we have opened a gateway to other worlds. This is, a good portion of the rite is that. We can talk to these spiritual beings at any time, but by opening a gateway we've made it easier. We've rolled down the window while we're shouting as opposed to trying to shout through the window. It's a little bit easier to get the message across. And it, and it really does help us. It also helps us move into the right mental space to, to experience ritual fully. We do not cast a circle in our, our style of ritual. If you need to leave for whatever reason, just to step quietly out of the space, that's fine. Go ahead and do what you need to do. Just be quite as respectful as you do that. That that's one reason we use a central gate and a center rather than have a defined boundary. I will also say I like working this ritual in this nepa time because we get this very nice sort of half shaded, half sunny effect going on. So it's very nice for an equinox. I I like the feeling of balance and a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's a mix of light and shadow, yep. which is perfect for the time of fall equinox. So yeah, I think that's most of what I wanted to get across, unless there were some sort of massive questions ranging from the folks beyond. I will say, um, for people here, if you've brought physical offerings that are not produce, you can go ahead and put them either down the offering shaft or on the fire during the praise offering portion of the rite. So that's if you've brought, like, if you've brought produce or if you brought produce, we'll put them in the basket and give them all together. If you've brought something else, there, there's the opportunity to give that away too. And at home, of course, feel free to give your personal gifts to the, to the deities or the nature spirits or the beloved dead as you so see fit because that's pretty much the story. So, <laughs> We'll be taking a brief break from here, probably about 15 minutes, to finish prepping the space, finish prepping ourselves, 
and then we'll come right back in with a pre-ritual meditation to help get us get our minds and bodies all ready to do this work. Thank you again for joining us and we hope to see you for a little while. We will begin everything in this rite of full equinox with an opening meditation to put ourselves in the right mind and right energy for ritual. Let us begin by focusing on our breath. Choose to control your breath. Feel it as it flows through your lungs, filling your body with the air. As a tree would, focus on growing roots down into the ground and know that below us is the primal energy of Mother Earth, cool, refreshing, healing. Through those roots, pull the waters of the world up into your body, into the cauldron of your loins, into the cauldron of your heart, and into the cauldron of your head. Feel the waters mingle within your body. Likewise, know that above us turn the eternal fires of the heavens. Reach up and pull some of that fire down, down into your body and feel it mingle in the cauldrons of your head, heart and loins, filling your body with light. Where there is water, there is light. Feel the waters and the fire mingle, healing and energizing every cell in your being. And open your eyes, prepared for the work. Now, we begin our rites by kindling our sacred fire. And inviting the queen of all sacred fires, goddess of all sacred fires and hearth fires, join us in our sacred space. Daughter of Kronos, venerable dame, the seat containing of unwearied flame and sacred rites, these ministers are yours. Worshippers, much blessed, holy and divine, accept these rites, according, accord each just desire and gentle health and needful good inspire. Great and glorious Hestia, Come light our sacred fire. Kairete Hestia. Kairete Hestia. Now let us give offering to the Earth Mother. O oh, goddess, earth of gods and men before, endowed with fertile, all destroying force, all parent bounding whose prolific powers produce a store of beauty, beauteous fruits and flowers, all various made, the eternal world's strong face, immortal, blessed, crowned with every grace. 
from whose wide womb, as from an endless root, fruits many form, immature, a grateful shoot, deep bosomed, blessed, pleased with grass, grassy plains, sweet to the smell, and with prolific rain. Lovely Gaia, here is a gift from us, your children. Kareta Gaia. 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 Now let us give offering to inspiration. Sources of blameless virtue to mankind who form to excellence the youthful mind, commanding queens who lead to sacred light, the intellect refined, and to mankind each holy right disclose for mystic knowledge from your nature flows. Come, venerable, various powers divine, with favoring aspects on your worshipers shine. Join us, sisters nine, and speak through our voices truly. Kairate Muse. Kairate Muse. Now let us make offering to the outdwellers. Titans you are, who fought the Teoi before Olympus. This is not your time. Please accept this gift for your tables. Likewise, let us set aside any thoughts, not of blessing. Trouble not our working here. Leave us in peace. Titan. Accept our offering. Titans, Titans, accept our offering. Now, let us hallow the sacred grove. By fire and by water. Thank you. 
by the might of the waters and the light of the fire. This robe is made whole and holy. Estor, meaning see it, so be it, in Greek. We come to keep the old ways, to acknowledge the season of the harvest, to honor the ingathering of the bounty of the land. And we come to give gifts to those who have spurred this growth, to Dionysus, who has given us the gift of fruitful vines and vegetables and joy, we give our welcome. And as the ancient fit at Eleusis, to those who choose to do so will attempt to learn from Persephone Desponia, who returns to rule in the realm of the dead on this day. As they once did, we too set aside time to welcome these deities of joy and prosperity into our lives. Now, let us open the gates. Here sits the Omphalus, the navel of the world, the sacred center of all the cosmos. At this place did Zeus eagles meet to make mark the center of the world. At this place did Apollo slay the Pythian serpent. At this place does the world tree grow that stretches from the waters below to the fires above. And now, we invite Hermes into our stage. We'll draw to stay as Hermes, four-sided deity, light-fingered Hermes, who stole Apollo's cattle and, and leveled the playing field. Swiftest Hermes, the god of commerce and the instigator of negotiation. Swiftest Hermes, who teaches the ways of the spirit from hot is realm to the realm of, of, of to the realm of manifestation to Olympus. And to psychopompus Hermes, the light touch at our left elbow as it is time to move on. Pirate Hermes. Pirate Hermes. So, Hermes, we ask you to join your magic with ours. And let the path, the underworld, be open. Let the path to Olympus be open. Let the path to the other world be open. And let the gates be open. Let the gates be open. Remind yourself of that center of the fire and water in your being. And remember that with the gates open, our spiritual kindreds know our thoughts. So let only good things be welcome here. Now, let us call for a blessing. <laughs> Renew your center, and let's give offering to the ancestors. Oh, Frognoi, our fathers and mothers, heroes and thinkers, who you whose lives still uphold our lives with your words and deeds, those whose warrior discipline kept safe the folk from the barbarous. Hail to the Patroi, our police, 
come and be welcome among us. Those whose creative spark left us knowledge and artwork and wisdom. Those whose poetic voice brought the thoughts of the muses to writing. You whose work in the world stayed after your souls went to Hades. Hail to Materes and your police. Come and be welcome among us. Karaitai Proganoi. gods and goddesses, strength of Olympus, wisest and strongest, overthrowing the cruel and barbarous beings, those who rule the worlds below, Titanioi, welcome, those who rule the worlds above, Olympians, welcome, heroes whose deeds allowed them to join your great company, patrons and matrons of all those who gather before you, you that create and guide our paths from the first to the last, Hail all the Teoi, come and be welcome among us. Karate Teoi, 
Throughout the year, Dionysus has brought us bounty and joy, entertainment, and even divine frenzy in which truths are learned. He is the dying and the reborn God. He knows he who has cut into pieces and rejoined into the friend of humanity and bringer of joy we know now. With the love of our gifts, to us in our hearts, we now bring you offerings to welcome you, joy, joyful Theos, Theos, into our company. We bring you wine, your gift to our kind and the bringer of joy and mirth. From our Lichten, we bring figs that you be well fed at your feast. Dionysus, accept our offering. Dionysus, accept our offering. Now. Now, with Dionysus joining us here, it is time to invite our other deity, Persephone. In the harvest season in ancient times, many would gather at Eleusis to be initiated into the Eleusinian mysteries. Included in these mysteries was a secret, which all were bound by oath to share only with others who had been initiated. To approach Persephone, we must first purify ourselves of any mistakes which we may have made that would make us unfit for her presence. In so doing, breathe deep now and remember your center. Find within yourself anything that would take you away from this sacred space and work. Cup your hands in front of you and allow those ills and impurities to flow into the cup of your hand. Keep them there as we come by and cleanse you with the waters of the well, the fires of the hearth, and the breath of the air.
now purified, we may approach Persephone. Persephone, we bring to you the Pelinoi, round cakes, to enjoy the bounty of the world as you return to the living land. And we bring to you pork in honor of those of the animal kingdom who must also go to your realm below. Persephone, accept our sacrifice. Persephone, accept our sacrifice. Now in your mind's eye, see this beautiful goddess approach us through the gate. In her right hand, she holds a sheaf of grain. In her left, a flaming torch. Her hair is in dark curls and falls freely on either side of her face. She is dressed for a funeral and prepared to make her journey. So with all the kindreds present in this grove, it is time for those who wish to make personal offerings to do so. If you've brought a portion of your harvest and your presence here, please place it in the basket right in front of Darius there. Any other personal offerings can go down the shaft or into the fire. And if they are offerings of performance, that can happen too as people see fit. song by I'm weaving a basket to carry the gathering in. I'm weaving a crown for my lover when harvest begin. I'm weaving a pattern of red and of gold. The hunter moon rises and season grows old. I'm weaving a basket to carry the gathering in. I'm weaving a cloak for in winter, my love to keep warm. To rule over deep frozen river, and ice driven storm. And I'll weave another to wrap myself in, to sleep while I may until life comes again. I'm weaving a cloth for in winter, my love to keep warm. I'm weaving a shirt for my lover to wear in the spring, to ride in the moonlight when stars and the whipper will sing. And I'll weave a gown that will 
will grow when I run. To dance on the mountains and welcome the sun. I'm weaving a shirt for the lover the season will bring. I'm weaving a rug made of heather and roses and dew. You lay at the feet of my love when each day glimmers new. We'll labor together and rest in the shade, for only by each candle weaving be made. I'm weaving in haste for the hours of summer are few. <laughs> All right, so this song, just in honor of the season. <laughs> Born. And that's we 
which she lost that past season In a few days from now, a balance will briefly come, and the domain, the domain of the moon will equal that of the sun. Now this is the time for the last gleanings of the field, when we gather and store what the God's gifts have given yield. And so we prepare while the earth falls into quiet autumn sleep, working hard to see what for the winter we may keep cooking, canning, smoking, drying, and of course, brewing for the grains, gathering, cutting, splitting, stacking wood before the autumn rains, pressing fruits to make the wines, getting honey for the mead, making sure we've covered all our winter's need. And so at the close of this beautiful summer's days, for this great plentiful season, we give the gods praise and make fire and make merry and voices raise to honor earth mother and gods and goddesses in the old ways. So, see here before you, many of our gifts and as we present for all to persephone to dionysus and all of the gathered kindreds here is a portion of our harvest that it be, give, be given as one last offering of thanks for our prosperity in the past seasons of growing Hail the kindreds. Hail, Hail the, the kindreds. kindreds. And now let us join our voices in the classic Druid's hum as one final offering. Voices arise on that fire. Let our voices resound in the deep. Let our call pass to, uh, to Dionysus, to Persephone, to all our honored kindreds. Kindreds all accept our sacrifice. Kindreds all accept our sacrifice. And now, offerings given. We look to our seer, see what they have to say for us. The first oracle.
is Sigma. Apollo speaks plainly, friend. Stay. There will be a stasis. Wait a while. The next is Omega. You will have a difficult harvest, not a useful one. The third is Lambda. The one on your left brings you aid, the one that you were least expecting. I see that we have a difficult time ahead as a community, as a people, but we must be patient for even through the difficult harvest and the challenges, we will have aid that we need. We will be granted the help that we need to be able to get through the coming trying times. Should we accept this? Should I we do more that offerings? It is in fact a good omen in its strange way. <laughs> in its strange way. It is a warning, but also a promise of aid. Yes. Okay. It says that through patience and perseverance, the difficulties can in fact help. Yes, we may overcome. We call for the blessing of the ancient ones. Together we cry, shining ones, give us the waters. And as we are blessed, let all the worlds be blessed. Together we call, shining ones, give us the waters. Let's join our hearts, let each of us be blessed. Shining ones, give us the waters. From the cup of Hyacinthos. Hyacinthos. We take up the nectar of blessing, this draft of Olympus, full of wisdom, love, and strength to aid us in the serving the shiny ones and each other. Hear us, Persephone. Come to us. Hallow these drinks with joy and bounty. Kindreds all, Proganoi, Nomatoi, Teoi. Hallow these drinks with your knowledge and powers. Estoy. Estoy. Behold the waters of life. Behold the waters of life.
Now, in your mind's eye, remember Persephone. You will be accompanying her on her journey from this realm to the land of our ancestors. Remember her in your mind's eye, clad in a black cloak with her torch and her sheaf in hand. She looks and beckons for us to follow her, if we dare. She leads us out of our grove, down a path towards the shores of the ocean. And by her power, she allows us to travel quickly right across the ocean as if we were in a very swift boat and land on the far shore. The land here is blurry, it's dark. It's hard to see exactly where your steps might take you. But you just follow that faint form of the goddess and the torch in front of you. There's a mighty three-headed hound, Kerberos, standing guard. And he sees the goddess and allows you to travel with her. And we next pass by two springs and the goddess turns and speaks to us. Do not drink from these, no matter how thirsty you may be, for they may cause you to forget all that you have learned. Continuing with her, as we enter the underworld proper, we are surrounded by the shades of our beloved dead. They welcome us, although are a bit confused by our presence. And we carefully continue following the goddess through the halls of the dead to the very heart of this realm, until we stand at the foot of Persephone's throne in her court in the underworld. She takes her seat and has this to say to us. The end of life is part of a cycle of constant change. What you have seen is a path that all of your kind must take. And with proper action in life, it is a path that you need not fear. Remember this. The seeds of next year's growth come from what has been reaped. This applies to all things, not just to the grain. The balance of light and dark, birth and growth and death, joy and despair. It must be preserved, lest all fall to ruins. Live lives of virtue and wisdom, and your contributions shall not be in vain. And now, as I grant you release from this realm, I have asked Hermes to guide your way back. And now, in vision arriving, our gatekeeper Hermes, with wings on his feet and a herald staff in his hand, he floats easily across the ground and leads us out back the way we came leaving Persephone on her throne. He waves aside the shaves of the dead as we pass. And with the gesture to Kerberos, the mighty guard, he once again allows us to pass. And with Hermes' aid, we float easily back across the ocean and land here again on the shores of the living. And from here, we travel back the path from ocean all the way back into this, our sacred grove. We return here in this world, and now it is time that we bless our very earthly feast. As we return to our realm of life, it is proper that we bless and honor the bounty of food that sustains us. May the wisdom and judgment of Persephone and the joy and fellowship of Dionysus and the blessings of the kindreds, the Teoi, the Numatoi, and the Progenoi 
be all present in our next meal. So be it. So, so be, be it. it. The Olympians, the Katsonii, have blessed us. With joy in our hearts, let us carry this magic from our sacred temple into our lives and our work. Each time we offer to the powers, they become stronger and more aware of our needs and our worship. Now, as we prepare to depart, let us give thanks to those who have aided us, beginning with our beloved Persephone. Mighty Persephone, guide and bless us as we go forward into our life. We thank you for your presence in this rite. Persephone, we thank you. Persephone, we thank you for your honor and joy in the upcoming season. Dionysus, we thank you. Dionysus, we thank you. Deities, we thank you. Deities, we thank you. Numatoi, for aiding us and being with us during our ritual, we thank you. Numatoi, we thank you. Numatoi, we thank you. Ancestor, thank you. Ancestors, we thank you. To all those powers that have aided us, once again we say, we thank you. Oh. Hermes, for your quick steps and for your gentle guidance, we thank you. And Hermes, we thank you. Now, it is proper that we end what we began. Let this fire be once again just flame. Let this well just again be just water. Let's all be as it was before, save only for the magic and wisdom we have gained. Let the gates be closed. Let the gates be closed. Now, let us thank the powers of inspiration. To the nine muses, Musai, we thank you. Musai, we thank you. Earth Mother, you're here with us every day, all day, and here with us especially today. Earth Mother, we thank you. Earth, Earth Mother, we thank you. Astia, for being our sacred fire, tending our sacred fire here at the center of our work. Astia, we thank you. Astia, we thank you. Welcome, Stone Creed Grove. Those here visiting, those joining us online, this rite has ended. Hey! Hey!